Mogadishu after the Al-Shabaab is relatively peaceful with much more calm. It is as if everyone is sighing with relief. Business is slowly returning to normal. Mogadishu residents are looking up bit to pick up the pieces despite reports of pockets where the Al-Shabaab militia could still be thriving. The buildings are battered from years of war. The walls of every building here a testimony of the rain of bullets that have landed on them. Moving through the heart of Mogadishu, we find ourselves at Bakara Market, which in the past was a center where fierce battles were fought between the interim transitional government and the Al-Shabaab militia. This market is notorious for its open arms trade. The weapons are laid out in the open from small arms to rocket propellers, complete with ammunition of all types. Because the enemy left a lot of, a lot of improvised explosive devices within this area. The other day we collected 147 war heads of 155 millimeters. And that's very dangerous, very, very dangerous. But August 6, 2011 was a turning point for Bakara market. The trade is no more. The market now under the peacekeeping troops. We later came to Bakara when we had bypassed it. We had seized the enemy. That's how we got Bakara into. But coming frontal was difficult because of all these tall buildings. There could have been a lot of destructions here. So our first priority was property and lives of human beings within Bakara. The capture of Bakara market, a lifeline of Al-Shabaab, has meant that the Islamic militia will have a dent in their pocket as they can no longer be funded by proceeds from the market, which top 10,000 US dollars every year. We wanted to control the economic hub that Al-Shabaab had been using to raise funds or revenue to support its operation, and that was Bakara. A glance at this market is indicative of a once thriving business empire with banking business, telecom and retail goods. Lokech Paul of the Ugandan contingent explains why winning Bakara was a key strategy for Amazon. We wanted to widen our, our, our span of control in Mogadishu. Widening this span of control relieved us from the incoming shells of Al-Shabaab because we were at the range. The civilian population and the town area was at the range, including State House, was at the range of Al-Shabaab motor shell, motor fire. This is Bakara, one of the places whereby the Al-Shabaab had seriously contained it, but Amazon forces at least managed to remove all of them from here. And you can see the buildings have really been devastated, showing that it was a serious fight for them to be removed from this place. Another strategic position for Al-Shabaab, but now in the hands of Amazon was this stadium. It was the place where the Islamists converged to plan their attacks. This is the position from which they planned and attacked the force headquarters in 2009. So by the time you choose to abandon your command post, you have really lost it. The biggest challenge of Amazon right now is recruitment, training and equipping the transition of federal government forces. We are developing their capacity so that we can roll them out to operate. Because with time they are the ones going to take over this responsibility of defending this country, because the country belongs to them. The Al-Shabaab may just be a distant memory in Mogadishu right now, but there are underlying concerns about the Islamist's next course of action. Could there be a regrouping to make a comeback despite having been weakened financially and technically? Everyone is confident that they have seen the last of them in this troubled city. But even as we leave the heart of the city, many cannot help but look over their shoulders. Maurice Ocho, NTV.